Welcome back to Chatter on the Wire. Uh, this first review is going to be of the Wemos ESP8266. Uh, there are tons of these out there on the market. Uh, I'll put a link to the one I specifically purchased. Uh, a little background on this project. Uh, a buddy of mine who I used to work with uh, on the networking staff, um, they had issues where people would always complain about wireless in the different um, areas of our place of employment. And people are always complaining about wireless. Um, it's just the go-to network gremlin, I think, anymore. But to double check to see if there were really issues there, um, three plus years ago we picked up a Raspberry Pi version two, uh, no built-in wireless, uh, installed quite a bit of different tracking software on that, got some IP perf or I, iperf uh, program set up on it to do some actual speed tests to uh, see what we could actually get across the wire at any given point in time. And that worked quite well for what we needed um, back in the day. That buddy has since moved on about a week, two weeks ago. He got a hold of me and said that he's seen the same kind of complaints where he's cur currently at. Asked if I had the old documentation for that. Well, I did provide that old documentation. I decided I would start looking for something a little different um, and cheaper. While the Raspberry Pi is not very expensive all said and done, we start buying all the pieces and parts, uh, cases, any of the other display screens, um, we quickly got into the $50, $60, $70 range. Um, again, not too expensive for something like that if you want to test, but this then brought up uh, what can we do um, three years later? What's changed in the technology realm? Um, so I picked up a little, as I said, uh, Wemos ESP8266. Uh, this one has a built-in screen. As you can see, it also has a built-in 18650 connector on the back of it. I'll try to show a close-up of it over, I believe, in this corner here. Um, it does have very few pins that you can use for other um, projects. Um, you can see across the top here, there are eight pins. We'll do a close-up, hopefully, up in the corner again on that. One of the big complaints I did have on this, which of course was not a deal breaker on it, was this chip here, and you should be able to see it in the close-up, was not square on there at all. So the pick and play that they used, or place, my apologies, um, either had some issues there, or their um, quality control missed this one. But even with how poorly this one is uh, squared up, it does still continue to work, so I have no complaints there. Uh, there is an on-off switch here in the corner. The 18650 can be uh, charged, but it cannot be running and charged at the same time as my understanding on this device. Uh, this device is set up, as are a lot of the other ones that I've found that are similar to this, to take a flat top 18650. Um, if you try to use one of these that actually has the little knob uh, on the positive end like that, it does not fit in there well. One of the other problems I've noticed with these um, is when you put these batteries in, it becomes very difficult uh, to get that back out. And before I put this battery in, uh, be aware there is no uh, reverse charge uh, ability or reverse um, reverse electric, I don't even know what the right term is. Plug the battery in wrong, you're going to fry things. So I went ahead and put positive and negative uh, marks on here just so that I can make sure I didn't fry this device. Um, one of the nice things about this device is it was extremely cheap. It was under $15. But as with everything you buy on Amazon, uh, what's there today may not be the same as what's there tomorrow. So I will provide a link into this, but after I purchased this device, it quickly changed on what the picture is. I still believe it comes with all those same bits and pieces, but it may not look exactly like this. Uh, one of the other things I really like about Arduino-based um, devices like this compared to a Raspberry Pi is you, as soon as you power it on, it's on. It doesn't take 15, 20, 30, 45 seconds to power up and to start displaying information. In this case, I had this program specifically to scan the SSIDs in my area and give human-readable information back out to whoever uh, was utilizing this. Um, instead of having negative 70, negative 67, etc. 
for the signal strength, which means nothing to most people, I actually converted that over to awesome, good, not good, unusable, stuff like that. Um, those conversions were taken specifically from a website I found, whether everyone is in agreement that that strength equals that type of usability, I can't say it was the first one I found, it was easy to do. I will link the code um, that I'm using here um, out there so that anyone that wants to reproduce this or use something similar to this can, but for $15 this device will work great. Uh, one of the shortcomings though is the ESP8266 only does 2.4 gigahertz. So that was one of the downsides for my buddy because at his new place of employment they've been working on moving everyone over to 5 gigahertz. So while this won't work perfectly for, for them, it will continue to work for me or for our network engineers at my current place of employment. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Um, if you're looking for a small device that you can program with the Arduino uh, IDE and that you can display information out to the screen, uh, I highly recommend this device or one similar to it. One big setback though, or um, issue that I did have with this was finding the correct libraries. Thankfully, someone else on the Amazon forums had provided some links to the documentation. I had tried to use some of the previous code that I had for, used for this display here, um, which was the, I believe, U8x8 uh, Arduino code, and I couldn't find a way to make that work with this. Um, had I dug in deeper, it probably would have worked, but the initial code that I put on this took maybe 10 minutes to get things displaying on that. It was probably more like uh, three or four minutes. Um, trying to get the display working though took me another half an hour to an hour. Uh, and that was a lot of digging around on the internet trying to find the right code to use on that. And partly because I was stubborn and trying to use previous code that I had done for the uh, display. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and I look forward to any feedback or comments you have. Thanks.